Hello everyone and welcome to the chapter 4 of human computer interaction and for this chapter we will be discussing about the HCI design. Okay, so let's move forward. Okay, so the summary of topics. For this video we will be discussing the overall design process, what are the different interface selection options and also uh, the hardware platforms and then the software interface components and also um, wireframing and uh, there is one example that we will also include which is the new sheets application we will be discussing the requirements analysis the user analysis the making a scenario and test modeling and the interface selection and consolidation okay so um, i hope you guys are gonna learn new things for this video. Can we move this? Okay, so the overall design process. So uh, this is very important that you guys must know because when uh, creating a software system, you must know what is the very first thing, no? what are the first things in order for you to design a really good system. Okay, so HSCI design is an integ integral part of a larger software design and its architectural development and is defined as the process of establishing the basic framework for user interaction or UI, which includes the following iterative steps and activities. So HSCI design includes all the preparatory activities required to develop an interactive software product that will provide a high level of usability and a good user experience when it is actually implemented. So this is the very first step and it's very important. So we will be discussing this process. So as you can see in, the, in this um, image, this is the overall HCI design. So these are the different processes before it is being um, passed through the implementation or the testing phase. So for this course, we will only be dealing this phase. Ito lang, okay? So don't worry because we're gonna um, discuss that one by one. Uh, what is the user analysis, the task analysis, requirements, etc. Okay, so diri tataman. Okay, and uh, is the next process. Okay, so this is the look. No, this is the overall iterative HCI design process as a precursor to implementation. Okay, so let's start with our first process. The first process is requirements analysis, or simply as data gathering. When, um, when you actually design something or business research, you, you, uh, you gather data. So any software design starts with a careful analysis of the functional requirements. Okay, so uh, for interactive software with a focus on the user experience, we take a particular look at the functions that be activated directly by the user through interaction so this is also called the functional task requirements and functions that are important in realizing certain aspects of the user experience or the functional ua requirements even though this may not be directly act, um, activated by the user so uh, let's discuss further one such example is an automatic functional feature of adjusting the display resolution of a streamed video based on the network traffic. So it is not always possible to computationally um, separate major functions from those of for the user interface. That is, certain functions actually have direct UI objectives. So finally, um, we identify non-functional UI requirements, which are UI, UI features rather than computational functions that are not directly related to, the, to accomplishing the main application tasks. So for instance, requiring a certain font size or type according to a cor corporate guideline may not be a critical functional requirement but a purely HCI requirement feature. So uh, let's discuss further and uh, let me give you an example, okay? 
So in requirements analysis, guys, you must know the functional and the non-functional requirements. So what are these functional requirements? This uh, this defined as the basic system behavior. Okay, essentially they are what the system does or must not do. Okay, and can be thought in um, thought of in terms of how the system responds to inputs. So functional requirements usually define F then behaviors and include calculations, data input, and business processes. Functional requirements, guys, is as easy as the features of your system. What are the different features of your software or your system? Let us say, for example, um, an application where it will detect a, a, a user who if a user is wearing or not wearing a mask. So something in an, an application. So um, the functional requirement would that be, well, that application successfully detects the face of, of a user, muna yang feature, okay? The non-functional requirement is this defined system attributes such as security, reliability, performance, maintainability, scalability, and usability. They serve as constraints or restrictions on the design of the system across the different backlogs. So the non-functional requirements is, again, um, attributes in the shop, um, such as the security, okay, reliability, performance, usability, and etc. The functional is the main features. I hope na na dili mo malibuga na. Again, the functional is the main features, and the non-functional are the attributes of uh, such as security, reliability, performance, maintainability, and usability. Okay, so uh, those were kung unsa ni mo ag uh, get you know, on how are you analyze the requirements. So it's very important. No, but you understand the functional and then the non-functional requirements. Okay. Next step. Okay. So sunod ni muhaton user analysis. You analyze again. But in, in the previous chapter, I told you na you must know who will be using your software. So that's very important. Para asa man ang imong software. Okay. So in user analysis. The results of the user analysis will be reflected back to the requirements, and this could identify additional UI, UI requirements, so functional or non-functional. So it is simply as the process to reinforce the original requirements analysis to further accommodate the potential users in a more complete way. So for instance, a particular age group might uh, necessitate certain interaction features, such as a large font size and high contrast, or there might be a need of functional UI features to adjust the scrolling speed, or etc. Okay, so for example, um, the user or your of your application will include the senior citizens or mga adults, no? And gusto ni mga pati sila, they will learn on how to use the software. So imong buhaton would be of course, uh, large, large ang fan size, daggo ang mga icons, to something like that, no? And also, if if the if imong application will be used by by students or mga middle age, uh, mga adults, unsa man ang 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 other options nga sa imong system, okay? Would it be butangan ba ni mo siya features na the user will will have an option to actually update you know to change the font size the font color or etc so it's very important that um, when you design a software you analyze who will gonna use your software okay the user analysis phase and I hope you uh, you guys have learned some learn something okay so that's it for our second process next is the scenario and task modeling Okay, of course, after gathering the requirements, getting what would be the different features, how we're gonna use the applications, we're gonna go with the scenario and then task modeling. What are the different jobs or tasks that your application is going to do? 
Okay, so this is the crux of interaction modeling. Identifying the application task structure and the sequential relationships between the different elements. So with a CRUD task model, we can also start to draw a more detailed scenario or a storyboard of envision how the system will be used and to assess both the appropriateness of the task model and the feasibility of the given requirements. So again, one can regard this simply as an iterative process to refine the original rough requirements. Okay, so you need to think of the different scenarios to what will gonna happen if Maoni and Buttons user, you define the task nga dapat Maoni ang mahitabo sa imo ang application. Okay, uh, of course, the developer will mag-base siya sa mga gipang buhat ni mga mga task, ang mga different scenarios. Okay? So, uh, that, that's the scenario. Don't worry, guys. We'll be, we have an example, no? I'll be giving you an example for this. Okay, so after that process, na apudai, we have interface selection and consolidation. For each of the subtasks and scenes in this storyboard, particularly software interface components, example widgets, interaction technique for the voice recognition, and hardware, sensors, actuators, buttons, display, etc., choices will be made. The chosen individual interface components need to be consolidated into a practical package because not of all these interface components may be available on working platform. That could either be in the Android, Android-based smartphones, desktop PC, or MP3 player, okay? Certain choices will have to be retracted in the interest of employing a particular interaction platform. So for instance, for a particular subtask and application context, the designer might have chosen voice recognition to be the most fitting interaction technique. However, if the required platform does not support a voice sensor or network access to the remote recognition server, an alternative will have to be devised. So such concessions can be made for many reasons besides platform requirements. Oh, such as? such as due to the constraints in budget, time, and personnel. So it's very important that you should understand uh, the interface selection and consolidation, consolidation. Okay, so again, for example, if an application nimo is nagkinahang na sensor, no, na sensor, okay? So you think kung kanisya nga sensor, muga na ba niya kung ako niya nga um, this application will be installed into a desktop or or in a mobile, no? So you must carefully think about the interface selection and consolidation. You consolidate, so as simple as that, okay? Next, um, the interface selection options. So what are different options in um, interface selection? First is the hardware platforms, okay? So for the hardware platforms, different interactions in subtask may require various individual devices, such as sample sensors and displays. We take a look at the hardware options in terms of the larger computing platforms. The choice of a design configuration for the hardware interaction platform is largely determined by the characteristics of the task or application that necessitates a certain operating environment. Therefore, the different platforms listed here are suited for the reflect of various operating environments. So the hardware platforms includes desktop. Of course, you are very familiar with this and I really believe na nakagamit na mo desktop, no? And uh, of course, a monitor, typical size of 
17 to 42 inches. It has keyboard, mouse, speakers, headphones, microphones. So that, that is desktop. Next hardware component is smartphones or handheld mobiles. Okay, so it's a typical size of three to five inches, resolution of 1722 by 1280 or higher. Okay, and of course it has buttons, touch screens, speakers or headphones, microphone, camera, sensor, etc. Okay, so smartphones are suited for the simple task, simple and short task. So special purpose task. So and uh, no need to further discuss because smartphones, no? Kabalo na mo anak. Tablets. Of course, nakakita na tag tablet, no? Kung wala ta unog tablet, nakakita na tag tablet. Okay? So, typical size is 7 to 10 inches with a resolution of 720 by 1280 or higher. So, again, mas dako siya sa itong smartphone, no? Um, it also has buttons, uh, touch screens, speaker, headphones, microphone, camera, vibrators, sensors, or acceleration, tilt, light, gyro, etc. Okay, so tablet is suited for simple, mobile, and short tasks. But those that are requ uh, that require a relatively large screen. Okay, so example would be a sales speech. Next, we also have embedded or stationary or mobile. If you are familiar with, uh, I don't know if na apabani karon no, yung mga MP3s na mga na mga LED screens. Okay, so typical size of less than three to five inches. Of course, it also have buttons, special embedded devices, or maybe mobile or stationary, and offer only a very limited interaction for a few simple functionalities. Okay, so it is suited for special tasks and situations where interaction and computations are needed on the spot. Um, it should, uh, example, we have printer, rice cooker, MP3 player, yeah, the, the personal media player, okay? Something like that. And next is the TV consoles. Of course, kita nagita tanan ng TV, no? So it has a larger size of uh, around 42 inches or less than. It also, uh, it also has a remote uh, button-based remote control, speaker, a microphone, a game controller, etc. So um, TV consoles is suited for public users and installations, limited interaction, short series of selection tasks, and monitoring tasks. Next is the virtual reality, okay? So it is a large surround and high resolution projection screen, head mounted display, stereoscopic display, 3D tracking sensors, 3D sound systems, haptic or tactile display, special sensors, peripherals, we have microphone, camera, the depth sensors, glove. So um, virtual reality is suited for special training Tele experience and telepresence and an immersive environment. Okay. Okay, so those are the different hardware platforms. Now we're gonna move forward with is the software interface component. So um, most of the software components are quite well known and familiar to most of the readers. So we only highlight important issues to consider in the interface selection. So what are these? Number one, windows or layers. Modern desktop computer interfaces are designed around windows, which are visual output, visual output channels and abstractions for individual computational processes. So for a single, a single application, a number of subtasks may be needed concurrently and this must be interfaced through multiple windows. So for relatively large displays, overlapping windows may be used. However, as the display size decreases in the mobile devices, non-overlapping layers, a full screen window may be used in which individual layers are activated in turn by flipping through them 
or um, example would be flicking movements on that screens. So as you may have noticed, no, um, some of the Gunga browse browse mo, no, or let's say say Facebook. Okay, there is a different UI design in in the desktop and then in the mobile. Diba? Lahi ang yaang, yung itsura ng pagka-plaster sa mga, sa buttons niya, sa mga columns niya, okay? So, that is our first component, windows or layers. Next is the icons, okay? So, icons or interactable objects may not uh, may be visually represented as a compact and small pictogram such as an icon and similarly as an icon for the oral modality clickable icons are simple and intuitive so as a compact representation designed for facilitated interaction icons must be designed to be as informative as distinctive as possible despite their small size and compactness Okay, so we have these examples in here. Of course, if you've seen this sign, um, I'll just give you an example. Can I? So, no? So it tells you that this, this is an alarm. Okay? Alarm on. Or, or an icon which is like this. So this is a shipping cart. Or well, this is a cart. This is an account. No, a profile or this is a bank okay so those were some of of the icons that you can use when you develop a system or software so you may use again an icons if you have noticed the facebook diba sa mobile niya um wala na wala na i uh, delete word ang inyong makita sa home that is in profile kundi mga icons na inyong makita diba Icons and more news feed, icons of uh, um, uh, different videos, ng mong mga bagong gipang post. Okay? So, yun ana. And next is very important. Of course, all applications has menus. This is very useful for the user to, of course, navigate your system. So, these are um, allow activations of comments and tasks through selection recognition rather than recall. So, menu, menu bars, menu navigation. As this is that. So, example, ganisha. If I want to navigate to the technologies page, the search page, the bundles, etc. Okay, the menus or the navigations. Next is the direct interaction. So, what is this direct interaction? The mouse or touch-based interaction is strongly tied to the concept of direct and visual interaction. So before the mouse, before the mouse era, the HCI was mostly in the form of keyboard inputting of text commands. The mouse made it possible for users to apply a direct metaphoric touch. No? Upon the direct objects, so which are visual, uh, which are visually and metaphorically represented as concrete objects with the icons, rather than commanding the operating system by a keyboard input to directly invoke the job. Okay, so in addition, in addition to this virtual touch for simple enactment, the direct and visual interaction has further extended to direct manipulation. Okay moving and gesturing with the cursor against the target interaction object. So for example, the dragging and dropping, okay? Cutting and pasting and rubber banding are typical examples of these extensions. So yeah, there is a direct interaction, okay? Next, the GUI components. Okay, of course, we are very familiar with Graphical user interface. Can you see that there are no mga icons, windows, menus, etc. Okay, so software interaction objects are mostly visual. We have already discussed the windows, icons, menus, and mouse or pointer-based interactions, which are the essential elements for the graphical user interface. So also sometimes referred to as the WIMP or the window, icon, mouse, and pointer. So the term WIMP, guys, is deliberately chosen for its negative connotation to emphasize its contrast 
with a newer upcoming generation of user interfaces, such as voice or language and gesture based. However, WIMP interfaces have greatly contributed to the mass proliferation, proliferation of computer technologies. Okay, so the different components of GOI is, of course, we are very familiar with text box. No, sige man tag register and log in with the different application siguro. So, na mag log in ka, no, mag, mag type in ka sa imong name, email, and password. So, na text box. Text box, sorry. Tall bars, okay? Gagamit mo siguro tag mga, if nakagamit mo Photoshop or Google Docs or uh, Microsoft Word, Microsoft Sheets, presentations, na mga tall, tall bars sa taas. Okay? So, that's one of the GUI components. Also, forms. Okay? Very fam familiar, no? The mixtures of menus, buttons, and text boxes for long thematic input. And also, dialogue or combo boxes. No, mga models, appeal na siya This is a mixture of menus, buttons, and text boxes for short mixed mode input. Okay? So, let me give you an example. So, text box. Kana siya dera. Toolbar. Yan. And then, course forms. And then, we also have models. Next is... Okay, the 3D interface into the interaction input space. So standard GUI elements that are operated and presented in the 2D space are, um, they are controlled by a mouse or touch screen and laid out on a 2D screen, okay? However, 2D control in a 3D application is often not sufficient. That is a great example, 3D games, okay? So the mismatch in the degree of freedom becomes um, brings about fatigue and inconvenience. So for this reason, non-WIMP-based interfaces are uh, such as 3D motion gestures are gaining popularity. Okay? Okay, the other non-WIMP interface. So the WIMP interface is synony synonymous with the GUI. So it has been a huge success since its introduction in the early 1980s when it is revolutionized computer operations. So thanks to the continuing advances in interface technologies, um, examples, the voice recognition, language understanding, gesture recognition or 3D tracking, and changes in the computing environment. Examples, the personal to of issues, sensors are everywhere. New interfaces are starting to making their way into our everyday lives. So in addition, the cloud computing environment has enabled running computationally expensive interface algorithms, which non-WIMP interface often require over less powerful in the mobile devices against large service populations. Okay, so that is the non-WIMP interfaces, okay? So again, examples be, you know, the voice recognition, the language understanding, gesture recognition or 3D tracking, something like those things. Okay, next is um, when you design an application is, let's move with the wireframing. Okay, in the wireframing, why is it important? The interaction modeling and interface options can be put together concurrently using the so-called wireframing process. So wireframing originated from making rough specifications for website page design and resembles a scenarios or storyboards. Or wireframing also called as mockups, no? So usually wireframes look like page symmetry Cinematics or screen blueprints, so which serve as a visual guide that represents the skeletal framework of a website or interface. Okay, so mag drawing drawing kani. Okay, wireframes can be pencil drawings or sketches on a whiteboard. Okay, or they can be produced by means of broad array array of free 
for commercial software applications. So there are, uh, don't worry guys, because sa, sa wireframing na parts in your system, um, we will be using a tool, no? But as of now, kung dili pa mo maka-access atong tool nga akong i-text sa inyo that I will be giving to you, you can uh, feel free to just draw it in a, in a uh, with, you know, pencils or unsa imong gusto gamitan. Okay? So again, the purpose of this, the through wire uh, framing, the developer can specify the flesh out of the kinds of information displayed the range of the functions available and their prioritized alternatives and interaction flow. So, dito makita niya, dito makita sa developer, ah, mao din ang possible nga mahitabo sa aning nga software. Okay? So, this is one of the most important also. Okay, so now let's move on with the naive design examples number no sheets 1.0 actually. Okay, so this is now the application of those design process. Okay, let's take a look at this example. Okay, so um, to illustrate the its CI design process more concurrently, we will go through the design of a simple interactive smartphone or Android application. This is called the new, uh, new sheets. So the main purpose of this application is to use the smartphone to pre present to present sheet music, thereby eliminating the need to handle paper sheet music. Sheet. Muramutag pronounce ng sheet. Joke, joke lang guys. Okay. So initial requirements for new sheets. Okay. So first, of course use the smartphone to present transcribe music like sheet music transcription includes only those for basic accompaniment like the chord information key and types such as c sharp dom 7 bit information and yeah example sound bit in the measures and then also we eliminate the need to carry and manage physical sheet music so store music transcription files using a simple file format. And other requirements would be help the user effectively accompany the music by time and effective presentation of musical information. Okay, and help the user to effectively practice accompaniment and sing along through the flexible control. And also will help the user to sing along by using the lyrics and beats in time fashion. So those were um, sample initial requirements for this application, for the new switch application. Next is the user analysis. Okay, so giyon siya pag analyze. Okay, so the typical user for new switch is a smartphone owner and no voice or intermediate piano player. Okay, so perhaps someone who wants to show off their musical skill at the piano bar. Since a smartphone is used, we would have to expect a reasonable power of sights for a typical usage. Okay, example, a viewing distance of about 50 centimeters, subtending a letter of positive negative one centimeter. Okay, so there does not seem to be a particular consideration for a particular age group or gender. However, there may be a consens consensus on how the chord or music information should be displayed. Example in portrait versus landscape, information layouts and locations of the control, paging, something like those things, the color coding method, okay, the up down scrolling versus the left right paging, uh, yeah. A very minimal user analysis that of the developer himself resulted in or a naive first trial interface requirements so note that for now most of the requirements or choices are rather arbitrary without clear justifications so for the user analysis there is one chapter for the uh yeah this will be um and discuss further in the next chapter on how to really analyze you no know, so users application that is one of our example for now, okay? 
And after that, okay, after na ito na siyang na-analyze, we will move to making a scenario and task modeling. So in here, based on the sh short requirements, we derive an a, a radical simple task model shown in the following list. Okay, first is select song. Okay, so the user will, will going to select a song. So there should be a select the song to view, okay? Next is select tempo. So set the tempo of the paging. Next, next scenario or the task could be showtime music information where show the current or next chord or beat or lyric, okay? And then we have the play and pause, the fast forward, the review, and then the show instruction or show the instruction as to how to use the system, okay? And set preferences. Set preferences for information display and others. And show information, software information or show version number and developer information, okay? So those were um, samples on the NoSheets applications. Okay, and then Okay. Okay. The subtasks as actions to be taken by the user can be viewed computationally as action events or reversely a, uh, a states that are activated according to the action events. Okay, so as you can see here in our example, um, it shows a possible state transition diagram for no sheets. Okay, so this one. Through such a such perspective, one can identify the precedence relationship among the subtasks, subtasks rather, from the top main menu. The user is allowed to, you know, set, select, change, view the preference, tempo, song, software information. Okay, so the user is also able to play and view the time display to the musical information but only after a song has been chosen, you know, or other could be while the time music information is displayed, the user can concurrently the four states or equivalently actions in the transparent box in the right are concurrent. They can either play or stop, move forward and move backward. So such a model can serve as a rough starting point for defining the overall software architecture for no sheets. So take a look at this example. So this one. Numerag inaana ang mahitabo, no? Inaana imong pagmodel sa iya. Okay. So this is the initial finalization of the interface design choice for no sheets. So you define the subdesk the interface design choice and then the justification okay so let us say for example the subtask is invoking main functions so in the in interface design choice you have this touch menu menu items and then in justification you know the familiar interface and then the catch tension okay so in selecting or changing a song of course there is a scrolling menu there's a return to main menu upon selection and then in selecting or changing tempo, there is a uh, scrolling ready buttons, return to main menu by OK button. Only one tempo is chosen at a given time as the justification. And also the task of showing the instruction, what will gonna happen. It will just show a one page screen or image with the condensed instructional content. And as for the justification, um, it will present condensed content so something like that okay so in playing or pause um, what will gonna happen will be it will just show the progress bar on the top control interface in the bottom provide sound beeps and vibration first and second beat so I guess this is just an example um, you, you define what are the different tasks again of your application so with that task Unsa ang makita din sa user, no? Okay, again, you do the wireframing and then you do making scenarios and task modeling. You state down, you list down 
on um unsay mahitabo kung kung mauni ang uh, mauni ang task no unsa ang naa sa design dapat nga naa siya okay so next is the wire framing okay so this is one of the example initial design wire frame for no sheets using a wire framing tool okay i will be giving you a wire framing tool pero kung if you will not be able to access kay medyo lisod pa ang panahon so don't worry you can use pen and paper no? so in the le left icons and go away elements in the main menu that can be dragged into the right to design an interface layer okay and navigation among the design layers can be defined as well so initial design wireframe for no sheets using a wireframing tool this one okay next okay let's we're actually at the end of the chapter so in this chapter we have described the design process for interactive applications, focusing on modeling of the interaction and selection of the interface. Okay. The discussion started with the requirements analysis and its continued refinement through user research and application task modeling. And then we drew up a storyboard and carefully considered different options for um, okay, wait, for particular interfaces by applying any relevant HCI principles, guidelines, and theories. So the overall process was illustrated with a specific example design, pro, uh, design process wait, for a simple application. So it roughly followed the aforementioned process, but it did so purposely in a hurried and simplistic fashion, leaving much potential for later improvement. So nevertheless, this exercise emphasizes that the design process is going to be unavoidably iterative because it is not usually possible to have the provisions for all usage possibilities. So this is why an evaluation is another necessary step in the sound of HCI design cycle. Even if a significant effort is thought to have gone into the initial design and prototyping. Okay, so in the next chapters, we first look at the issues involved with taking the design into actual implementation. So the implemented prototype or final version must then be evaluated in the real situations for future continued at iterative improvement, ex improvement, extensions, and refinement. So that would be all for this chapter, the chapter four. Guys, please, um, if you know, gakalibugan just replay the video you can always go back to which slides as a kanalibog okay and of course feel free to reach me out if you have questions and clarifications so thank you so much for watching and have a great day and god bless to you